Well, hello, Nick here, and welcome back to The Shack and to part three of our series on designing, building, and testing an LC filter. Um, so we've got our uh, high-pass filter here, and, and in truth, um, there's not a lot you can do with this because there's not a lot of parts on it. Uh, if you have to tweak it, all right, you could change the value of the capacitors, uh, you could change uh, the inductance uh, of those toroids by uh, bunching the, the, the turns together or, or separating them out or taking a turn off or putting a turn on. Um, but uh, we've already tested this when we, when we built it. So we measured those, uh, the, the values of those and got them spot on. And of course, we'd already modelled it. Um, so we know what it should look like. Uh, and the truth is, with... Um, uh, a low pass filter or or um or a high pass filter like this generally speaking um the the values are not so critical whereas uh if you're building a, a band pass filter or band stop filter uh then they they certainly are so uh, and that's when you have to have some adjustment um some kind of variable trimmer capacitors or something to, to actually uh, um, uh, to kind of have some variation in that so you can tweak it exactly as you want it. With this, um, there's not a lot you can do at this stage now, um, but hopefully, you know, it, it should be okay. So how are we going to test it? Well, uh, that kind of depends on what equipment you've got. If you've got very little equipment at all, you can still do some kind of testing on it. So um, uh, if you've got a uh, radio transmitter, which you probably have, um, and a separate receiver uh, and a dummy load, uh, then you can. Uh, so what you do uh, is you, uh, is you put the dummy load on your transmitter, you turn it down to the lowest possible power that it will do, something like 5 watts or something at the most, um, and then you receive on your separate receiver, um, and uh, maybe just with a tiny little antenna or a bit of wire or something. It doesn't need to be a flash aerial. In fact, you don't want it to be big. You just want a little bit of signal coming through. And, and hear, hear what it sounds like. And then bear in mind, thinking what you're testing. Uh, so we want this to shelve off before the 80 meter band. Um, so you can, you can hear uh, what signals um, uh, higher up than uh, the 80 meter band sound like they should pass through uh, and we would expect things below the 80 meter band to be attenuated if this thing's working right. Uh, and so you can do it and you can then plug this in to your transmitter and put the dummy load on the end of this. Um, and uh, and, and uh, this will certainly do five watts with the size of those toroids. Um, and then listen to it. So And hopefully as you go below, so if you were to put something through on the uh, uh, 160 uh, meter uh, band perhaps, and, and put that through it, hopefully you'd find those signals very much uh, attenuated. So you can do that. If you've got an oscilloscope, that um, gives you more options, particularly if you've got an, uh, a fast Fourier transform uh, uh, function on that, and you can actually see then uh, you know, uh, the, with your own eyes how, uh, how much attenuation you're getting and where. Um, if you've got um, a spectrum analyzer, Good for you, <laughs> half your luck. <laughs> but um, so that you've got all kinds of options. I'm assuming you've not got one of those. If you have, fantastic. Um, uh, I'm just going to tell you about one way you could do it, and then I'm going to do it another way, which is probably the easiest way, uh, and and for most amateurs, probably the best way these days. But one way you can do it, the way I started out doing it, was with one of these. Uh, this is uh, an SDR play. Uh, this is, uh, well, I don't think they make these anymore now. This is an RSP2, um, but you can uh, get an RSP1A, I think is the current one, about £90 or something. It's, it's a brilliant bit of kit, uh, made in the UK. Um, uh, it's a, a software-defined radio, and I use it as uh, just a, a general-purpose receiver. Um, and uh, uh, it has a USB port, and uh, you run free software, um, uh, on your computer and and you get a great you know, spectral display and uh, and got some good, really good filtering and, and and stuff in it so yeah it's brilliant and it's how how i got into ham radio actually with this um but what's really interesting about this is uh that there's a, a ham that has written a spectrum analyzer program for this 
uh, piece of hardware that you can download freely on the SDR Play website. Um, and and it, it enables you to do a, some things akin to what you might see on a spectrum analyzer. Uh, now, clearly, it's not like a Siglent or Rigel, you know, spectrum analyzer. And there's no tracking generator. Now, now that is an issue. Uh, you can do a number of things. If you have uh, some form of signal generator, then you can do uh, 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 certain measurements. Uh, or you can just build yourself one of these. Um, uh, this is just a little wideband noise generator. Essentially, uh, what it is, and you, you probably can't see very well in there, but it's essentially just uh, a couple, you can't see because of the battery, but a couple of transistors. It's just a little oscillator um, and produces um, a signal at audio levels, but with loads of harmonics <laughs> right the way up through, certainly all the way through the uh, uh, the HF uh, region and beyond. Um, just noise. But noise is fine uh, when what you want is a constant uh, signal that covering a big uh, uh, slice of frequency spectrum, and, and you can see how your filter is performing. So what you can do uh, is you uh, hook this up to uh, your filter, and then uh, you hook the filter up to this, and you plug this in, and you run the spectrum analyzer software, and uh, and sure enough, you can see. Uh, uh, that uh, that shelving effect. Um, in truth, the software I've got a bit of an early version of it. It's a little bit buggy, but it it does work. Um, it doesn't work so well actually for this kind of filter when you're you're looking at large slices of RF spectrum. Where it does work quite well is when you look at smaller ones. So when you're building bandpass filters. And certainly things like crystal filters and stuff, it's really good for that. And you can really see exactly what's going on. So, yeah, so that, that will work. Um, but the way we're going to do it today um, is to use what I use all the time now, which is the Nano VNA. And uh, I'm, there's loads of stuff on the Internet uh, about you know where to buy these forms, which ones to buy, how to use them. So I'm not going to go into any of that. Now, but this is the little device that we're going to use. Uh, this thing really has revolutionized my um, my testing of, of many things uh, in, in the shack and is really, really helpful. And uh, it's about £40, I, I think. Um, you can pay more, you can pay less. Um, but, um, but actually for that, you get an awful lot uh, for your money. And uh, as you'll see, so this is what we're going to use um, to to test our high pass filter. So let's get on with it. So here is the uh, finished uh, item, and you, you'll see uh, those little SMAs are great because they connect straight in to the Nano VNA, and this really is pretty essential. I think a Nano VNA, um, they don't break the bank. Um, and they're so, so useful for so many amateur radio uses, and especially for home brewing stuff. Um, now, you'll see just by a cursory glance at, at this um, that uh, that curve is looking very good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to the, um, the screen of my computer where I'm running the uh, Nano VNA Saver software. So actually that will kind of mirror what you're seeing here. And it will just be easy to point out a few things. Um, but that's the, the basic thing. Uh, of course, before I did this, of course, I had to calibrate uh, the Nano VNA for the frequency um, span that I want to use, etc. And I'll say more about that in just a moment. And here is uh, Nano VNA Saver. So what you're seeing here uh, is just uh, the, uh, the results, the different results that the Nano VNA produces. Uh, mirrored uh, through the uh, through the software, so it might look a little bit confusing, but I'll just point out a few things. So first of all, here here's the most important one. This is the curve uh, that we're talking about. So what I've done, I and I calibrated it first from 500 kilohertz to 5 megahertz because that would show me uh, whether it was working. Um, and this is the the naught dB line. So now this little red triangle here, this marker. Uh, is set to uh, 3.51. So really, that's that's the beginning of the um, uh, the 80 meter band, uh, and you'll see at that point uh, we've got a brilliant uh, SWR 
naught to eight. Uh, the impedance is uh, uh, 48.6, and um, the uh, and the uh, the the S21 gain at the moment is minus 0 0.03. So that that's essentially the insertion loss. Uh, so very very little loss. And you can see actually, I di I did run another uh, test which went higher in frequency, and this line is constant. So um, uh, we don't get any uh, nasty surprises uh, further up. Um, so, uh, but this is the bit I'm interested in because this is the bit where we attenuate uh, below the 80 meter band. Don't worry about these little spikes and things. That's just um, um, just part of the anomalies that you get when you do these kind of measurements uh, with this kind of uh, equipment. Um, so, what I'm going to do now. Um, so, this, this is the uh, this is basically measuring the uh, the gain um, of. Uh, Going through the, the filter, the, the filtering action, the attenuation really, not not the gain. Um, and this is the Smith chart here, and you'll see this centre here is the is the fifty ohms bit really, and you'll see we're bang on that. Um, this is the SWR, and you'll see uh, superb there, and you'll see this massive hike in the SWR, which is corresponding to uh, this attenuation here. So that all looks. Uh, good. This is looking at the impedance, and you can see that actually that's 51.4. We're, we're pretty much bang on um, at the beginning of the um, the 80 meter band. Uh, but my offending signal, so let's just pull this marker down, was somewhere now. Let's have a look. It will change up here, wasn't it? It was about 1.33, I think. 1.31. As I get it in the right ballpark figure, well, let's call it 1.35. Um, it's a bit bit lower than that, but even if it is 1.35, um, <laughs> SWR is 106, <laughs> which is good. Um, and uh, essentially, uh, what we're looking at here is um, minus 42. Uh, dBs of attenuation, so that is brilliant. That's just what we want. Minus 42, so that's really going to knock uh, that offending um, uh, intermodulation project right down. Hopefully, um, uh, right down into the uh, into the noise floor. So that's brilliant, and that's just what I wanted to see. So yeah, really pleased with that. Um, um, and you can see, and it's saying this, this is a great bit of software. I haven't used it very much, to be honest. I just tend to use the, the, the Nano V8 as it is. But it is a superb um, uh, little device. And, uh, uh, and if you can get one, I would advise that you get one. There's loads of uh, information on the internet about how to use them, so I'm not going to go into that. There's lots more people, far better than me, that can tell you about how to, to use it. But, but it is a really useful little tool, and particularly for things like filters, because you really see whether your filter is doing what you want it to do, where you want it uh, to do it. Um, so that's very good. So, um, so there it is. Um, uh, we've uh, designed it, we've uh, built it, and we've tested it. And uh, uh, so, uh, jobs are good. Well, there it is. We've designed it, we've built it, we've tested it, and now I'm using it. So, um, and it does what I wanted it to do. So, yeah, really pleased with that. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, this series of videos on the uh, on the LC filter at some stage i'll get around to doing one about bandpass filters because they are more fiddly and uh, and that's probably going to be uh, perhaps more useful to people as well but that could be sometime in the future um i'm clearly not an expert <laughs> in any of these things and i don't pretend to be um i'm just like a lot of us fascinated with this stuff and if my enthusiastic ramblings um, can uh, can help or encourage or inspire anybody else to uh, to, to give it a go uh, then that's good enough for me so thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you again soon on the next video bye bye